Good evening, good evening. Today is August 22nd, 2019. I'm Travis, and this is Oscar Mike Radio. Oscar Mike Radio is part of the Hoobazoo Network. You can find out more on hoobazoo.com. And the summer is winding down. About one more week for us up here in the Northeast with uh, school vacation. And the kids are getting after it, partying hard before it's time for the books. Oscar Mike Radio is supported by Joyce Asac of Asac Realty. Thank you. So again, I'm um, trying this a little different as far as podcasting goes. In other words, you can still go to uh, SoundCloud, CastBox, Google Podcast, Stitcher, anywhere else and you'll hear this podcast. But for those of you on YouTube and Facebook Live, this is yours truly uh, doing this um, live and happy to be here and talking with you all. And so as I get this dialed in, these might not be 30 minutes long. These may be 30 minutes long. Um, but I'm trying to dial in all the software and the experience and make sure that I actually know what I'm doing, which I think I do. I think I do. So this is more of a question slash story slash rant. And I'll start with the story part first. Well, last Sunday, I met a very good friend of mine in, uh, who's a Navy veteran. And if you're watching this right now, you know exactly who you are. We've known each other for uh, quite some time, done a lot of good stuff together. And he said, you know, I got to tell you something, Trav. About two months ago, I started ticking myself off all the 22 for 22, 22 this, 22 that, 22, 22, 22, social media and, and websites, email chains, phone calls, and Facebook groups. And I was really surprised. I'm not going to lie. I was really surprised because that, like for a lot of veterans, that is a very uh, near and dear subject to their hearts, right? It is, it is legit. It is for real. And they want to be involved. They don't want to see the things that we've all seen. You know, I've seen it and these guys have seen it where... They've had to explain to a family member why their loved one committed suicide. So it was very strange to hear him talk about this. And he said, it's not that I don't support anything to do with keeping veterans alive or from committing suicide. He's just like in, in his own self, right? In his own self, he felt like he was getting constant bad news constant negativity and he had no way to, to lift himself up right he had no way to ever make feel like he was making progress so one of the things he wanted to do is make this about positivity and for him that meant kind of getting away from always having the number 22 in his mindset. And he went on to explain, he'd get up in the morning and he'd see uh, notifications on Facebook from 22 groups. He'd be checking his Instagram feed on the train. There's another 22 for 22 um, notification. He'd be on you know other social media forums and it was constantly some guy in trouble or some woman who, you know, needed help or just constant negativity. And I don't think he was doing this from a position of trying to think he was better than anybody else. I can understand where in his mind he had to make a change because he said it was bringing him down. He felt down. He felt defeated every day. He didn't like how he felt. He didn't, he didn't like that feeling of helplessness. And he wanted to learn how to empower himself 
to help that veteran, but also he's like, look, man, we have got to start talking about the victories. So the question I'm asking myself and I'm asking you all, and you can weigh in on uh, my Facebook page or on this blog post for the podcast, hit me up on email, Travis to OscarMikeRadio.com, Instagram or Twitter. Is it possible, is it conceivable that you can have almost too much emphasis on 22? Is that possible? If it's not possible, then what's the answer? Because I asked him, I said, you know, there was a time in this country where no one cared at all. And it wasn't until enough people sounded the alarm that there was this attention brought to this issue and people started taking awareness and taking notes that, hey, there's a problem here. And I'm like, do you feel we've gone too much the other way? He's like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But what I do know is I, I, I need to hear some victories. I need to hear that the good guys have won. I need to see that person who has faced their demons, looked into the abyss, gave it the finger and said, F you, I'm going to go out and do my own thing. I've got family and friends who love me and I'm not going to throw this away. And I don't see that enough. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, have we, is a teeter totter, you know, bent too much this way? Or are we just about right? Or is it bent too far the other way? I mean, what's, what's the right answer here? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. I know I don't want to get in a situation where a veteran feels like they've been marginalized to the point where they don't matter. And I think that's happened a lot of times, especially in the last 100 years. And I do agree to a lot of people's points that there are, um, oh, thank you. There are a lot of um, resources out there now, whether it's uh, dog therapy, equestrian therapy, yoga, essential oils, um, painting, anything, artistic therapy, um, any number of things that are are not approved by the VA, private organizations working in their own way to um, provide services for veterans who may or may not need them. When I say may not, you know, maybe there is a problem, they don't know what it is, and they'll take these services and find out that maybe it's not all bad and, you know, maybe they just get somebody who cares about them. It's not bad. It's not a bad thing. Or it's a real problem. It's a real issue. And they get to the bottom of it and they live a better life. Regardless, I don't think anybody loses except for that person who may not be genuine about what's bothering them. But that's a different, that's a different topic for a different time. What I'm talking about here is you know, being constantly bombarded with messages that say um, there's a problem. And I think that's what this person felt like. He felt like he just heard about problems all the time. And so I'm really going to ask people, I mean, what do you think? Do you think there's, there's too much emphasis on this? Do you think the media is kind of brushing this underneath the rug? Do you think that we should talk more about this? Do you think he has a point? I'm inclined to agree with him to an extent that if you're constantly told something about yourself, that you're damaged, that you're broken, that you're this, that you're that, that you're crazy. I've been told that, that I'm, I'm crazy or I'm paranoid. And then you find out that you're not crazy, not paranoid. It, it does something to you. But if you allow yourself to believe something long enough after being completely, you know, inundated with messages and, and media and focus, you know, why, why wouldn't you believe that? And I say that because in the, the blog post for this podcast, I'm going to have a website that links to this aspect of um, reporting and talking about veteran suicide and PTSD and PTSD 
where there have been instances of copycat um, suicides. And I'm going to talk about that in a different podcast because I, I can't, I didn't want to try to unpack it here. I'm just trying to get people to ask themselves a question and maybe look at some answers, right? But certainly in other parts of our, our country and some of the things that we're going through right now, there are certainly um, some carryover, I think, where people see something on the news and they go out and do it because that person is doing it. In the, one of the oldest expressions since I was a kid, monkey see, monkey do. But at the end of the day, I, I just... Um, I just wanted to understand, is this too much? Is the number 22 too much? Are we focusing on negative too much? Are we focusing on death and destruction too much? There are several people that will tell you that there are plenty of resources for veterans who need help, that the issue is connection, connecting that veteran with the services and with the people that can help that veteran out, right? So it's not a question of a lack of resources or a lack of help or a lack of people qualified to assist. It is a lot of times connecting that veteran to that resource or simply that veteran picking up the phone or filling out the form online to start the process. And I, and I will say, you know, it kind of makes sense what this, this guy was telling me on Sunday because, you know, bad news sells a lot more than good news. A lot more. So I, I'm just interested to, to hear what you all think. Uh, I'm encouraging you to kind of debate this and talk about this and tell me how you feel. I'd be very interested. So I just, um, I just had to think about it and I kind of wanted to riff on a little bit and, and, and really kind of unpack how I feel. And, and, and again, if I haven't said that clearly, I think, I think we need to find a balance. I don't want to go back to the early two thousands when this was happening and nothing was being done. And I think to give more more perspective we'll need to do some talks and podcasts on the actual studies that got us to number 22. I think you'll be very surprised at what was done to get to that number and how it was done. So I know on the one outlier I don't want to be in a situation where there's no help, right? No help at all. But on the other hand, is there a case is there a legitimate reason behind this person's thinking that maybe just maybe it's too much on the other side where it's so much bad news that that it feels hopeless to get out of it and if if that is a if enough people have that feeling and feel the same way well, then how do we get back to this balance, right? How do we get the equilibrium where we accentuate the positive and what's being good around this in a way that doesn't glorify the negative? And that's kind of what I want us to talk about and discuss. I, I want us to come together as veterans and as the families who have gone through this themselves and see what they think. I'd kind of like to know. I'd kind of like to know. And again, I just want to say I really appreciate when I go live like this, all the people that come in and participate and, and join in. If you if you like this and you, and you like the conversation, please um, you know like the like the social media instances, share it all around, and and interact with me interact with each other. This is a place where we as veterans can talk about stuff like this. This veteran felt comfortable coming to me and, and talking to me about this. I didn't judge him. 
and, 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 and nor would I anybody, especially if anybody disagree with what he said, you know, Oscar Mike radio is that place where you as a military person, male or female service member, former current can, you know, tell me how you feel. Tell me what you're thinking about. And we're going to try to make some good out of it. So thanks for, uh, wrapping with me on the live session. I always love doing this. I'm getting uh, more comfortable in front of the camera, kind of, and just trying to do uh, different stuff. So let me know how you feel. I, I do think, though, we need to kind of start telling some some victories. And I'll see. That, excuse me. I'll see what you think about that. So I'm going to wrap this up now. I really don't want to drag this out and just talk for the sake of talking, but uh, that's how I feel. I felt it was a very interesting subject, and I think what's next is really some, some a podcast series about how the number 22 came into existence and where it is now. I'm Travis. This is Oscar Mike Radio. Uh, Locked through launch, we are on the move. <laughs>